Excuse me, the dog. Hi, guys. Uh, well, it is a hot, sticky, bleh, midsummer day here in early April. Doomsday trailer. I don't know if we've hit our first official 90 degree day. 2024 in Denellen, Florida or not here in the collapse of everything but uh, <clears throat> it is now Wednesday April 10th which you, some of you might be aware you know I've been waiting for this day the old real estate investor has been waiting for today for weeks to uh, do some uh, doomsday Florida real estate investing that has gone down the toilet because the entire county in Hernando County, Florida's computer system has crashed and burned. So, can't do that. I can't go to my other real estate investment in Florida to drag sticks or I would have heat stroke within five minutes. This is my sick dog lying here in the shade just panting i think oh my god do we finally have a breeze blowing but anyway since i've got nothing else to do today on this hot sticky summer day i uh, decided to come over here to do some doom scrolling at medium.com and I've, I've kind of been thinking of doing a a clueless moron of the week uh, award winner <clears throat> kind of like the ain't gonna happen on steroids this is the dragonfly catching the mosquitoes I guess and uh, this would have been a contender some clueless moron named George Dillard with his brilliant essay why aren't we all starving why Malthus was wrong why Malthus was wrong and what it may tell us about the future there you go uh, but you know I started reading this shit and I uh, you know the only thing wrong uh, is, is this story so I didn't get far <clears throat> because I was very encouraged that we have a new uh, essay by my, uh, who I thought was my fellow uh, Doomer and Collapsitarian, the uh, <clears throat> Enigmatic B. The Enigmatic B uh, showing up today. Uh, I have a bug on my... Uh, on my glasses good lord probably what the dragonfly was trying to get <clears throat> so what is all b's mind today he is talking about radical acceptance so i said okay and uh so because i know if it's b that i'm getting ready to read some intelligent commentary and i go into this and just as promised I got to some uh, through some absolutely spot-on analysis, which I'm getting ready to share uh, with you. But you want to stick with me because we get down to the very bottom, and B makes an announcement so startling coming out of B's mouth. It's either a typo that he. I'm, I'm thinking this. This either has to be a typo. Or maybe uh, George Dillard, uh, why Malthus was wrong, has somehow infected uh, B. But B is going to talk about you know, you know this whole term acceptance. You know, basically accepting the fact that we're fucked. There, the we're fucked. Uh, the planet's fucked. There's nothing anybody's going to do about it. Uh, and accepting the fact. So what does radical acceptance <clears throat> mean to be? There has been a slew of articles recently from many commentators I follow on the topic of 
acceptance. Since I was traveling the better part of last week, please allow me to share only a short reflection on this topic as opposed to my usual long rants on the techno-utopian madness pouring in on all channels, including the George Dillard channel on medium.com. So this is B's idea of a short uh, review instead of a long rant. <clears throat> Take it away, B. So, what is radical acceptance? For me, it means accepting that no single technological civilization based on finite resources is sustainable, neither in the Bronze Age nor in the Iron Age, let alone in an era of industrial revolution. None. Why? Because all spend their nest egg, be it fertile topsoil, forest or, cool, or, or coal, lithium and copper, a million times faster than it can be replenished. Recycling and sustainability practices can only slow down the process somewhat, at least in theory, but rarely in practice the circular economy together with renewables are nothing but fairy tales we tell ourselves to scare off the wolves at night. Sorry to be this blunt, but the decline of this techno-industrial civilization is inevitable <clears throat> and is already well underway and anyone who doesn't believe that can uh, go talk to the good folks in uh, Hernando County, Florida right now today. <clears throat> the only type of civilization, if you want to use that term, which proved to be more or less sustainable so far, was a basic hunter-gatherer society. <clears throat> complemented perhaps with some agroforestry, pottery, and some low-key metallurgy. Anything beyond that inevitably destroyed the soil and the very resource base supporting the entire edifice. With that said, I am not suggesting that we should immediately go back to the caves and mud huts. We all know the story of the mud hut. That would be impossible for four billion of us, entirely supported by large-scale agriculture based on artificial fertilizers and a range of pesticides. However, it is important to note that this is the direction we are headed, with the only question being how fast we will get there and how many humans can be sustained via such a lifestyle. And this is where acceptance comes into view. Once you understand, and I always add the term understand on a cellular level, once you understand, not just know, that burning through a finite amount of mineral reserves at an exponential pace leads to depletion and environmental degradation at the same time, you start to see how unsustainable any human civilization is. All that technology in its narrowest technical sense does is turning natural resources into products and services useful for us at the cost of polluting the environment. Technology use is thus not only the root cause of our predicament, no, uh, well actually uh, breeding is the root cause of our predicament. 
uh, the lack of technology to keep people like bee from breeding, I guess, is the techno technology root of our problem. Anyway, uh, technology use, according to Breeder B, is thus not only the root cause of our predicament, but it can only accelerate this process. More technology, more depletion, more pollution. Stocks draw down, stocks drawn down, sinks filling up. Simple as that. Of course, you can elaborate on this matter as long as you wish, <clears throat> conjuring up all sorts of game changer. You know, this is my newest, the newest uh, tired cliche of the techno utopians. I think the techno utopians have given up on the uh, uh, on the narrowing window of opportunity, and now since they've given up on the rapidly closing. Uh, narrow window of opportunity since that window is shut now we get to hear about all the game changers that are going to change the game of the collapse of everything yes of course uh, conjuring up all sorts of game cha changer and wonder machines from fusion to vertical gardens, the verdict remains the same. It is all unsustainable, period. There are no clean technologies and without dense energy sources like fossil fuels, there won't be any technology, at least not at the scale we see today. Many people, such as George Dillard, right next to this article, say, oh, this is so depressing. And I ask, why? Because your grand-grandchildren will have to work on a field and grow their own food? Or that you might not even have grand-grandchildren? I, I think the term is great-grandchildren, but... Uh, I guess his great-grandchildren are going to be grand-grandchildren. Anyway, I don't mean that I have no human feelings. I have two children whom I love the most. I have a good, a very good life, supported entirely by this technological society. Sure, I would love to see this last forever and that my kin would enjoy such a comfortable life, but I came to understand that this, you know, comfortable life cannot last, perhaps not even through my lifetime. I realize that I most probably will pass away from an otherwise totally treatable disease just because the healthcare system will be in absolute shambles by the time I will need it the most. But then what? Such is life. Some generations experience the rising tide lift all boats period in a civilization's lifestyle, life cycle, while others have to live through its multi-decade, if not centuries-long decline. <clears throat> I did feel envy, shame, and anxiety over that, but all the thoughts I've written about above have slowly sunk in these bad, but as what I would say as soon as the thoughts I've written about above have slowly sunk in, these bad feelings, you know, about how fucked we are, all went away. It all started to look perfectly normal and, dare I say, natural. The, the collapse of everything is, you know, it's all part of the life cycle. Uh, no one set out to design this modern iteration of civilization 
with an idea to base it entirely on finite resources so that it will crash and burn when those inputs start to run low and the pollution released during their use start to wreck the climate and the ecosystem as a whole. I want you to pay attention to uh, that sentence. To wreck the climate and the ecosystem as a whole, meaning that the whole shebang. No, it all just seemed like just another good idea. Why not use coal when all the woods were burned? Why not turn to oil then when the easily, easily accessible part of our coal reserves started to run out? At the time and at the scale of that time, it all made perfect sense. And as we got more efficient and thus it all got cheaper, more people started to hop on board. And why not? Why, who would not want to live a better life through our wondrous technologies? Can you say India with, what, about a billion people looking to flip on their air conditioner? I want you to notice I do not have the air conditioner on today. <clears throat> The great sociologist C. Wright Mills summed up this process the best when writing about the role of fate in history. <clears throat> fate is shaping history when what happening to us was intended by no one and was the summary outcome of innumerable small decisions about other matters by innumerable people, close quote. Scientifically speaking, this civilization, just like the many others preceding it, is yet another self-organizing, complex, adaptive system. It seeks out the most accessible energy source and sucks it dry while increasing the overall entropy of the system, we as a species are obeying the laws of thermodynamics and the rule set out in the maximum power principle. Just like galaxies, stars, a pack of wolves, fungi, or yeast cells, <clears throat> there is nothing personal against humanity in this. We are just a bunch of apes playing with fire. Once I got this, once I got this, I started to see this whole process together with our written history of the past 10,000 years as an offshoot of natural evolution, something which is rapidly reaching its culmination only to be ended as a failed experiment, or as Ronald Wright put it brilliantly in his book, A Short History of Progress, quote, <clears throat> letting apes run the laboratory was fun for a while, but in the end, a bad idea, close quote. So, no, I'm not depressed at all. It was fun to see how far a species can go, but also reassuring that it was a one-off experiment. Once this high-tech idiocy is over, it will be impossible to start another industrial revolution anyway. There will be no more easy to mine, close to the surface ores and minerals, everything left behind by this rapacious society will remain buried beneath a thousand feet of rocks and will be of such a low quality that it will not be worth the effort. 
lacking resources to maintain them, cities, roads, bridges will rust and crumble into the rising seas <clears throat> while others will be replaced by deserts or lush forests. The reset button has been pressed already. It just takes a couple of millennia for a reboot to happen. So, uh, so far, so good. I'm with B all the way. <clears throat> Contradictory as it may sound, this is what actually gives me hood. This is what actually gives me hood. Gives me hood. Gives me gives me hood. Uh, uh. Bereft of cheap oil and an access to Earth's mineral reserves, future generations of humans will be unable to continue the eco side. There will be no new lithium mines, nor toxic tailings or hazardous chemicals leaching into the groundwater. Our descendants will be forced to live a more sustainable, more eco-friendly life. There will be no other way. The eco side will end. This also means that there will be no solution to climate change nor ecological collapse. So I'm thinking, okay, that, that had to be a, uh, a, a typo. Uh, so, I, 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 so I go back and, 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 and read the whole sentence. So he is claiming that when the civilization collapses, that Mother Nature will just, just recover, that there will still be humans living here, uh, that humanity, that some of us will come through the bottleneck and we will be living a more sustainable, more eco-friendly life. Uh, the ecocide will end. Okay. This also means that there will be no solution to climate change nor ecological collapse. So guys, all right, I have five years of college uh, in, in journalism, ba basically writing. So you can kind of parse this sentence down, you, you, you know, and trim it, uh, trim it and prune it. And he is saying... There will be no ecological collapse. That uh, B sees no evidence of an ecological collapse. He claims to be in radical acceptance. So B's, and, and th this is his rant, so B's what radical acceptance to be means it does not, his definition of radical acceptance does not have room for ecological collapse in it and, and, or the uh, extinction of the human race. Uh, so this is just me. This is Sam Mitchell talking, not B. My idea of radical acceptance does include ecological collapse and the extinction of the human race. Okay, so I guess the question is, can you be in radical acceptance while refusing to, the, to accept the reality of both ecological collapse and the extinction of the human race? So, either B or Sam Mitchell obviously does not understand the definition of 
of radical acceptance or uh, radical acceptance is in the eye of the uh, radical acceptor. Now, uh, of course, the main difference between me and B is that B is a breeder and I am not. So, uh, if, 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 anyway, I am uh, still a little uh, confused that, that B, uh, everything he's written is talking about all of this shit leading up to ecological collapse. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this rant after, after uh, B announces that there will be no ecological collapse. He goes on to wrap it up. They both, meaning I guess climate change and the borderline ecological collapse, I guess, they both will run their due course and take care of reducing our numbers to acceptable levels, which of course, in my definition, is zero, is the acceptable level of humans on the planet is zero. <clears throat> Again, don't fret too much about it. Barring a nuclear conflict, this process could last well into the next century and beyond. Yeah, I, I guess uh, 10 million years is a little bit beyond the next century. You, you know, I, I have never made the point that we're going to have such an ecological collapse that uh, the, the planet is just, you know, is going to be left looking like Venus or Mars and, and is going to support no life. I mean, it is going to be a a good century to be a jellyfish, as uh, as I was saying uh, last night. So maybe his definition of ecological collapse is different than mine. You know, I consider the collapse of the Amazon rainforest and every other rainforest on the planet, which is well underway, to be ecological collapse. I I think the collapse of the coral reefs, which is certainly uh, well underway, uh, meets the definition of ecological collapse. The Arctic ice sheets, the Antarctic ice sheets, the glaciers. Anyway, uh, maybe uh, B and I just have a different definition of ecological collapse. Uh, this process could last well into the next century and beyond. The collapse of modernity will take much longer than any of us could imagine and will certainly look nothing like what we see in the movies. No, as I was saying yesterday, it's going to look like an entire county's uh, computer system going down is what it's going to look like. Uh, and no, cutting your emissions will not help at all. Live your life to its fullest. Indulge in this civilization or retreat to a farm. It's all up to you and your values. This is what I mean under the term radical acceptance. We are a species of this earth, and paraphrasing Tom Mur Murphy, <clears throat> we either succeed with the rest of life on this planet or go down together. Nurturing her, nurturing her, nurturing her, nurturing her, nurturing her, 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 based techno utopian solutions in trying to remain 
optimistic does not solve anything. This whole ordeal is unsustainable. What's more, it was from the get-go, and that which is unsustainable will not be sustained. And that is fine. We, as a species, are part of a much bigger whole, the web of life, and returning to our proper place as foraging humanoids will serve and fit into that hole much better than any techno-utopian solution could. So, uh, anyway, I guess obviously uh, we have a debate about what constitutes radical acceptance, as I left in the comments, to be uh, you know, once you accept the fact that we are staring ecological collapse in the face, uh, and uh, obviously that, that humans, uh, like, like every one of our fellow earthlings, are, are, are going to get taken down during this ecological collapse, once you're ready to accept that, then you've met the uh, the Sam Mitchell uh, definition of radical acceptance. Anyway, all right, we have the chipper cranking up. I'm jealous. I wish I had a chipper. Get out there and. Uh, chip up your ecosystem and enjoy the fruits of this global industrial civilization while you still can. Bye guys.